KNWSO 91.9 FM is a non-commercial community radio station owned and operated by the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. We serve folks who live on the Warm Springs Indian Reservation in rural central Oregon and our surrounding neighbors. KNWSO went on the air in 1986 and our connection to community is strong. We know not everyone listens all the time, so we have worked to expand our information sharing beyond broadcast to include website and social media platforms, creating print material as well as creating videos. For listeners and those connecting online, KWSO is public media serving the Warm Springs area with news and useful information not provided by any other outlets because our lens is local. KWSO was selected as one of 10 rural radio stations across the country to participate in the National Federation of Community Broadcasters Community Council Initiative. NFCB's Sally Kane explains. NFCB is over 40 years old. It stands for the National Federation of Community Broadcasters. And our whole point for being is to lift up community radio as a unique uh, form of public media within a larger public media system and to really serve stations by enhancing um, the knowledge set and skill sets that they have to run a station and supporting them, encouraging them in their work. We organize convenings so that the community and the field of community radio can all get together and learn from one another. And we try to bring quality trainings to people in community radio because um, these tend to be smaller stations and um, predominantly living and operating in more remote communities in the country. So access to trainings, access to peer groups is harder to come by. And we try and make that happen for community radio stations. Our community radio stations are very well positioned to have some of their best years ever in serving communities as, um, as, as sort of complex world problems take root um, across the globe. These are media organizations where people who are keeping the station going and creating the content are living in the community. So they're directly tied to it. And that's a really powerful place to be NFCB is a member organization. We have 100, over 180 radio stations. It was important to me as a national organization that we not only offer a menu of conventional services, but that we are investing as thought leaders in this space and that we're being strategic about how we help position community radio for the long haul. And KWSO has its effective connection project going on within community counts. So you're part of this cohort that we're basically view as a strategic investment on our part in the larger community space. And its whole point and purpose is to provide customized assistance and support so that community radio stations can optimize their capacity and only through doing that can community stations expand, improve, and enhance the valuable service that they provide. KWSO's Effective Connections Project focused on building robust collaborations with health, mental health, and prevention partners. Focusing on six community events this year, KWSO created enhanced content and leveraged all platforms to better publicize happenings as well as purposefully increase information dissemination and content focused on health education and local resources. There are folks in our community who are suffering as a result of lifestyle choices and environmental issues that can be prevented. Warm Springs Health and Human Services General Manager Caroline Cruz says there's too many risk factors impacting people in a negative way. Health and mental health providers and prevention staff provide support, education, and understanding in an effort to turn the tide of suffering in Warm Springs and to begin a new wave of improving wellness. What we try to do throughout the year is offer a variety of activities to show this community that we care. And so even though it sounds like an Easter egg hunt, sounds so simple, it really brings families together saying that this community cares, the kids are having fun, it's a family activity. Over the years we see not only parents coming, 
we see grandparents coming, and it turns into a happy event. So we're creating happy memories. We are uh, bringing uh, a belief system that this is an alcohol, tobacco, drug-free event that's being modeled. These kids are seeing this as a safe uh, place to be. This is a safe activity. Elder abuse takes many different forms, some involving intimidation or threats against the elderly, some involving neglect, and others involving financial trickery. Elder abuse tends to take place where the senior lives, where their abusers are often adult children, other family members such as grandchildren, or a spouse or a partner. Most elders who report issues don't want someone arrested. They just want people to behave themselves, to come visit drug and alcohol free, to not argue or ask for money, to not steal or eat all the elders' food. To learn more about elder protection, contact Victims of Crime Services next to the old boys' dorm or report concerns to the Warm Springs Police Department. Hi, so I think your station is really great. I live in Sisters and I listen to it whenever I can. My name is George Myers and I work with the Homeless Leadership Coalition. And we today have our point in time homeless count. We work with the tribe here to do a count in January. And the bad news is the numbers are up. This is Gordon Scott. I'm here with the Oregon Health and Science University program. Um, we have the on track program we're trying to kick to the community and so we're here today offering some fruit, some health activities and uh, my business card. Today here at the health fair we are uh, answering questions for tenants as well as um, handing out flyers, uh, applications for our program. We offer tribal rental, home ownership, low rent program, senior housing, down payment assistant, tribal head bash. Experiencing trauma often has lasting effects that you might not recognize. There's so many examples of trauma, and for Native Americans, that can include loss of homelands and lifeways, systematically being marginalized, forced assimilation, loss of language, and life in extreme poverty. When it comes to historical trauma for Natives, boarding school traumatic experiences continue to have negative impact generations later. Warm Springs Prevention's Rosanna Jackson and Mikey Martinez. The way they were raised in boarding schools affects the way they're parenting. So when we're talking about the next generation of youth, how they parent those youth is how they were treated. And that's where the cycle continues and needs to break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not to be so explicit, but that goes into, I'm just going to say it, physical abuse, sexual abuse, assault, I mean, incest, alcoholism. I mean, these are all ways. Adverse are, childhood experiences. Yeah, very bad experiences. And people, as in any culture, they cope in sometimes maladaptive ways, and that's alcoholism and treating their kids the exact same way, like Rosanna said, that they were treated. And that's really, for us, that's where a lot of that originated in. KWSO continues to build our capacity to create quality content shared on multi-platforms that will have positive impact in our community.